On today's Taste Texas, it's all about Thanksgiving leftovers and we're piling them high. Plus, we head over to the farm for some winter greens and Chef Garth is heating up the grill for a steak pizza. I only need about one minute per side, especially on this high heat infrared burner. So pull up a chair and join us at the table. I'm Amy Kushner. And I'm Garth Blackburn. And so today is all about Thanksgiving leftovers because Lord knows you're going to have plenty of those and you're not going to know what to do with them. You need to make something really yummy and I bet Chef Garth has got the best idea. Latin style leftovers. So we're oh, going to go nice. with a little Tex-Mex theme. This is actually a way that I love turkey because right. mix it with a little bit of pepper jack cheese on a tostada. That's what we're going to do. Some greens on the top and yes. a little bit of your special guacamole. Oh yes, and guacamole. We cannot forget the guacamole. That's Can't the best part. That. All right, well let's get cooking. Let's get cooking. So we're going to crank up the heat in this pan. I'm going to make some black beans, but I want to doctor them up a little bit, a little bit yeah. of flavor. So take a little oil. Hey, would that be grapeseed oil? It would be. All right. I'm also a big fan. I've started getting into avocado oil. So really? I've got a little bit right here. It also has a high smoke point. I could blend these two together. So if you want to add a little bit, a little bit of different flavor and something that's a little healthier for you. Does it taste like benefits. avocado? Just real lightly. So right. you're not going to get overwhelmed with it. But yeah. in this case, who cares, right? It so is Tex-Mex. So let's do it. It is Tex-Mex. All right. So these are some sweet peppers. Mm -hmm. This is about four cloves of garlic. Yum. You've got red, yellow, and orange in there. Red, yellow, and orange. Okay. And Does then, it matter? Can we throw green in too, just to be festive? Um, I'm not a huge fan of the green bell pepper because it oh, can be okay. a little bit overwhelming. So. Okay. So red, yellow, and But you can and have orange. whatever you want. Make it your own, right? All right. Sounds All right, great. And, and then a little bit of red onion as well. And this is actually some Texas red onion. Mm-hmm. And we're going to get those sautéed. Nice. I don't need a lot of color. I just want to see that they're translucent, that they're nice and soft, because they're going to get to cook a while longer when I add the black beans to it. Mm -hmm. We are taking a bit of a shortcut with the black beans. I'm not going to let them soak overnight. Nobody's in the mood for that after Thanksgiving, right? No. Just we want the stuff quick and easy and delicious. All right, which is your theme regardless, That's right? That's my theme. Have to quick, be easy, delicious. Perfect. Okay. Let's check the oil temp. You know, we've gone over this quite a bit before. How do we know if the oil in that pan is you hot enough? You insert the bottom of this wooden handle. And when it starts to boil, within what, five seconds, 10 seconds? Three seconds, okay. but she I was, close. was within seven seconds. Of That's good enough, right? It was supposed and when to it be. boils, after three seconds, it's hot enough to do. To fry. To fry. We're going to fry something. What are we right. frying? Tortillas. Tortillas. Here, tortillas. Nice. There. And are these the corn? Or? These are thick corn tortillas. Mm -hmm. I really like these. These are actually made in Texas as well. They're from yeah. Roses. You, you, what you'll see is they're going to start to delaminate. So go ahead and toss yours in as well. Delaminate. We yeah, I never so it'll, thought it'll of doing that. They'll puff up a little bit. They'll get a lot of layers to them. See how they're starting to puff? Right. Oh, and that's neat. I'm going to go ahead and get. How some long tongs. do you, you want to flip them? Until they're golden. So yeah, we can keep flipping them. What you'll see is that the oils. I'll stand <laughs> this back. This is going to pay back for you talking to me with a knife in your hand, right? <laughs> Oh yeah, about that's, that. <laughs> that's the reason I chopped the onion today, is we almost had an, an incident the last time that Amy was talking with her hands and using a knife. You know how women are. You just yeah, talk exactly. with your hands, like and the that. next thing you know, you're flinging a knife, and somebody's in front of you, and somebody's going to get hurt. But so, those are gorgeous. So you just continually flip them. You do, and here's here's what's happening. When they're starting to puff up, you're uh -huh. going to get oil inside that. Yes. You just you want to keep turning them, and before you pull them out, you want to shake all that oil out. You, want, you don't want them to become greasy. Shake it off. Shake it off. <laughs> I Just heard a breaking song. Breaking a song like that? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I heard a song like that. Okay, perfect. Well, those look so perfectly check, crunchy. Please. Okay, so those are almost done. In fact, they are done. Oh my gosh. Shake that oil out. It's going to be a perfectly crunchy tostada. And this is so much better than the stuff that you buy in the grocery store that doesn't expire until yeah. the year like 2017 because it's got all the preservatives and everything else in it. You don't want that. It. You this don't is all want about that. freshness. Nice. Okay, so let's put another one in there because I think that one needs extra love too. And this will crisp up even more after it's been sitting out. 
and while it still has the oil on it, that's when we want to put the salt on. Yes, because they are a little bland without that salt. And go ahead and salt both sides, correct? Because you're going to eat both sides, right? Yes, you are. So let's salt both sides. Yes, you are going to eat both sides. Okay. okay, now back to the beans. Yes. What I like when I'm cooking with spices, mm -hmm. like smoked paprika mm -hmm. and chili powder, and then this is roasted cumin, is I like to put it in the oil mm -hmm. and toast it. Before I really? put it in the black beans, right, it's going to bring out, like anytime you cook something like steak or you saute chicken when it yeah. gets a little bit of high heat, I mean, get a, get a little whiff, you can start to smell it. Oh, and the cumin, yes. That cumin. Yeah, and that that's roasted gorgeous. cumin is fairly new to the market. I, I'm a oh, huge you're, fan. You're I'm dripping. dripping. That means it's time to just go ahead and dump in those black beans. And did you, you didn't drain those cans. No, because I like to let them cook down in their own liquid. Uh -huh. And that's also going to make sure they stay nice and black as well. So nice. we can just stir that up. Oh my gosh, it's already smelling so good. I need to flip this tortilla or we're going to lose him and we just can't have that happen. Um, we're Look gonna take a go. small break and we will be right back with more Thanksgiving leftovers, y'all. Latin style. <laughs> Thanksgiving Day leftovers, which are very Tex-Mex-like. Uh, we went to a farm recently, and we wanted to have you take a look at Damasus Farm, where we learned all about some wonderful produce just outside of Boyd, Texas. Hey, we're at Damasus Farm. We're going to go pick some veggies. Don't mind the mess. Yeah, yeah. road trip. My granddad uh, come from the old country in Greece. He was full of Greek. Wow. And uh, he come from... Uh, kind of on the Turkish border, and he uh, come into Fort, the stories that I heard, he come into Fort Worth uh, at a train station, and he was headed to, uh, out in California to start farming. And there was a lot of Greeks in uh, Fort Worth, and uh, one of them had uh, approached him and got to talking to him, and asked him if he'd mind staying in here to start out, start out farming. And uh, that's how he started out. He started out on, the, there were several Greeks got together and started farming on Beach Street. Okay. What do y'all grow out here? Well, right now it's just mainly the cold crop stuff, like greens and cauliflower, cabbage, stuff like that. In the summer times it's squash, and tomatoes, anything that's in the vegetable line we grow. Do you cook at home? Oh yeah. I don't. Oh, no, you eat at home. <laughs> I eat at home. <laughs> So you raise it, you grow it, and she cooks it. That's right. <laughs> Kale has really, really took over. Uh, What's up with that? Why? 20 years ago, when we were into vineyards, we had started growing it, uh -huh. and you would sell only like 10 cases a week. Right. It was kind of a fill-in. And you'd go into restaurants, and it'd just be, you know, decorated pieces and stuff. Right, right. But people have uh, started eating more healthier, and they started eating more of it. You know, when we first started growing it, a lot of people that uh, had emus and ostriches would come out here and buy baskets and baskets of it wow. to feed them. Interesting. So. You know, I'd like to argue that it's part of it is the words getting out on how to cook it. So you see kale in all the magazines now, and so that now people understand right. not to be afraid of it's not going to be bitter. You don't have to cook it for hours. You can have it fresh in a salad. I mean, I, right. some of the greens I think people are really realizing because they, they get recipes for them. They yeah. get to see see how to make it. Your greens, mainly uh, your collards and kale and stuff. The colder that it gets, mm -hmm. the sweeter the, the taste. The freezes put a sweet taste in them. Like from Thanksgiving on up till December and January, that's when it's the best, best flavor. Love meeting every one of those people out in the field. Good folks. Yeah. Been doing it for three generations. That's really impressive. Yep, absolutely. Plus, how can you beat just and then laying they down us and home. eating bok choy right out of the farm, right out of the ground? That's right. A little bit of dirt. <laughs> uh, in fact, that <laughs> little griddle never hurt you. Little, little griddle. It, it could here. Uh, there was a lot of dirt. In fact, when y'all go to the farmer's market, you mm -hmm. really, you got to realize this has not been triple washed and put right. in a package and sent on a truck a it thousand miles. It is truly miles. out of the ground. It's out of the ground. So when you're buying from these folks, you really got to wash them well. And just rinsing in a colander is not sufficient because you're not going to get the dirt all the way off. So I like to put my greens, all my produce really, in, in ice water. Right. Why but, do you do ice water? Because the, the ice is going to help refresh. 
Okay. So if they start to wilt a little bit, that's going to bring back some of the, uh, the crispness. Mm -hmm. And the reason for the water, do so you notice, see how the dirt is falling right. to the bottom? Right. And the greens are staying on top. And then you can see how much dirt really came off your produce. That's kind of interesting. It Straight reminds me of like when, you, like when you clean your carpet and you can see all the dirty water that <laughs> yeah, comes, you, The comes things you out don't want to know. Well, it's interesting, right? You're like, ooh, all that was in there? Yuck. <laughs> now you know they're clean because it's all left in that water. Great. Okay. Thanks for comparing this to your <laughs> dirty carpet. <laughs> Golly. It's just a thought. <laughs> so I've got two different kinds of kale. They, go, they grow three kinds of kale there. Right. This is regular kale as well as uh, dinosaur kale. Mm-hmm. What's the difference in dinosaur kale and regular kale? Well, I would have shown you right before I cut it, but yeah. it's a little bit late to see. Uh, it's a, a little bit hardier. The leaf itself is a little bit thicker. It's okay. not ideal for the kale chips like the regular kale is. So right. like to bake the kale. This isn't going to be the best one for it. Okay. I found that when you're getting fresh, delicious carrots, right. that you really don't need to peel them because the, the skin isn't terribly thick. So why don't you pour a little but bit? they look a little dirty, but they're not dirty. They're not. We, we wash them well, okay. so that's just the discoloration of the carrot. Put some avocado oil in there if you would. Okay, just a little bit or oh, a lot. That's good. Oh, okay. That's good. And then why don't you squeeze a little bit of the lime juice in. Okay. I'm going to put in some salt and pepper. Hey, it's uh, post Thanksgiving, so. That's right. We're looking at, we got to have something a little bit healthy. And if we're frying a tostada and topping that with cheese, then this is going to have to be our, our token effort. So we're going to put this little greens. salad on the top. Right. All right, so next up. Thank you. We're going to doctor up our black beans. I know right, this is back one of your to the black beans. As well, right? I adore these. Candy I, crisp. I should be paid to sell these because I be. tell everybody about these candy crisp jalapenos from uh, Texas Pepper Works. You can get them in most grocery stores. And they are so good on brisket Everything. sandwiches, nachos, you name it. They're so good. Okay. And then so I don't want a lot of there. acidity in here, so mm -hmm. I'm going to do just the lime zest. I like the lime flavor, but not the. Uh, not all the acid. Okay, I would have thought you would have put that lime juice in there, but no. I, just, I like the richness of the black beans, mm -hmm. so we'll just let that be. Gorgeous. Those black beans are gonna be amazing. With the leftover turkey that we have here. That is, so at this point we can just let that simmer down, mm -hmm. uh, add all those flavors, let them get combined. These hearty greens can be left in the dressing, really even for a day or so. Really? So, right, because it's not like lettuce where you're going to have you know a lot of wilting. Right. It'll hold up. In fact, you remember having to massage the kale for that yes, one. Yes, I remember that, one that. episode mm -hmm. that we did. Mm -hmm. That means if you don't massage, it's going to hold up just fine. Nice. All right. All right. So we're going to take a quick break, right. and then when we come back, I'm going to show you how to make my guacamole. More good Tex-Mex leftovers for Thanksgiving. We'll be right back. the beans get ready and we've got turkey ready and what else we got to do next I'm just gonna assemble these tostadas by putting some turkey down and uh -huh. then some ancho cacciota from the Dallas fresh mozzarella company Paul Lambert's place. say that slowly please Ancho. The ancho that's like the chili yes. cacciota that's the type of cheese it's like a it's like pepper jack okay that? thanks pepper, pepper jack, jack from the fresh mozzarella I know how to buy company. that you know how to buy pepper jack. Right, so while I'm assembling these, why yes. don't you show me your guac? All right, so what we do at home is we just take some nice, big, ripe avocados, and I dice them um, and try not to cut my hand when I'm doing that. Mm, how did that work out this last time? <laughs> and it didn't work out so well, but we'll talk about that later. Because you didn't take the seed out the right way. So moving on, <laughs> uh, we mash them up really good with a fork. Garth likes his chunky, so however you like to do it at home, we like ours mashed. And then um, I add in just a little bit of sour cream, maybe a dollop or two. Precise Whatever. culinary measurement. <laughs> Whatever you like. The sour cream gives it such a great creaminess. If you like sour cream, throw it in your guac and it'll just, it'll just boost it. And that daisy sour cream is actually a Texas product as well. Very nice, I'm you're right. I'm just gonna toss these in the oven. Okay, you toss those in the oven, and then what I like to do is put some fresh pico de gallo, and you can already, you know, buy that already on the shelf if you don't wanna take the time to uh, cut and dice all this up. So I just add in a few scoops of that, and really the point is, is just to make it to your lightness. Some people like more or less. And then of course, um, let's see, oh, salt and pepper. So do you always do it on the cutting board? Yeah. This is like table side, right? <laughs> that restaurant in Mexico? Hey, I should be a chef. I would get kicked out of Texas if I didn't know how to make guacamole, right? 
and then lime <laughs> juice to finish. Doesn't that look yum? I don't think they saw the face of me when he said he and, should be a chef. And, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll put that okay. in your face. <laughs> and of course, you got to have the big tortilla chips to go with that. So anyway, mix it all up, put it in a bowl, put that pit right in the middle. Where's that? Oh, there's that pit. Put it in a bowl and put the pit in the middle. And as you know, if you don't know, that will keep your avocado from turning brown and kind of getting that dingy, not so healthy look um, before you eat it, actually. so. That is my that looks delicious. guacamole. There you go, you're welcome. This is gonna be great on that tostado. Did I, you wanna try I that? I can't even wait. Really? Wait, bring the chips, where are the mm. chips? Cause this is my- That's awesome. If somebody said, what's your delicious. last meal? I would say guacamole. chips and guacamole. Mm. Yeah, this is my last meal. Last meal. Yeah, okay, so let's keep going. While mm. you're chowing down on your own food, we're gonna make a quick mm. sauce in addition. It's gonna so go around good. the outside of the plate. This, you know, this being leftovers, right? This yes. is leftover cranberry sauce. And we normally have that. Right. And so I'm going to put that in Because not everybody pan. wants cranberry sauce, even though we make a bunch. So what and, are you going to do with that? Well, the sweetness goes really well with some of the spice. So some of the heat from the jalapeno and then that pepper jack cheese, mm -hmm. ancho cacciota. Uh-huh. And then also the adobo sauce from the chipotle pepper. I love to use this stuff. Real smoky. It is. A little bit goes a long way. It I does. normally don't even use a whole can. I normally... Just use a little bit. And since you use all of my lime juice, I'm gonna go ahead and get a little bit more out of that. Yeah? We're just gonna heat this up and make it a little warm. That's gonna be drizzled around the plate. Ew, it's I, like a nice sauce to go on top of this. And a little garnish So you just well. chefified this tostada. I chefified the tostada, another, another great term. <laughs> nice. So with Perfect. that, those, those are melting. We'll pull them out of the oven after about okay. five minutes at 350 degrees. Put the salad on it and then we'll be ready to roll. All this is coming together, the Thanksgiving leftovers. We're gonna plate that when we come back. Stay with us. All right, we're in a new place at the Subs or Wolf showroom. That's our incredible outdoor kitchen. We're getting ready to do a char-grilled hanger and farm-fresh spinach pizza. It's gonna be easy, let's get rolling. Got some kosher salt for our hanger steaks, some freshly cracked black pepper. And hit this with a little bit of grapeseed oil. And we're gonna get to grilling. All right, looking delicious. I'm going for the high heat to get a great sear. Then I'm gonna move it over to the cooler side of the grill for some indirect cooking to get it through to a perfect medium rare. I only need about one minute per side, especially on this high heat infrared burner. Okay, now I'm gonna move it to the cooler side of the grill. I'm gonna let that finish cooking through. Close the lid, it works like an oven, and then we're gonna make our sauce. Okay, let's make our quick leek sauce. A Little bit of Dallas area butter. Some of our leeks. Okay, now we're gonna add some of our milking heavy cream. Just a little bit, that's what's gonna make it nice and saucy. Some kosher salt, some pepper. And then to hold it all together, we're gonna put some Full Quiver Farms garlic herb cheese. Okay, now we're gonna take our flat bread. You can buy this at most Indian restaurants. It's called naan. I'm gonna toast it a little bit on the higher heat portion of the grill just to take a little chill off before we flip it over, assemble the topping, the beef's finishing through, and then we'll slice the beef and put it on to serve. So now we're gonna grab our sauce. Put that across the flatbread. We'll top that with some Damascus Farm fresh spinach they picked from the ground for us. Just tear those big stems off. Okay, now we're gonna grab some smoked scamorza from the Fresh Mozzarella Company right here in Dallas. Okay, our hanger steaks are a delicious medium rare. We'll pull those off, let them rest for about five minutes. The pizza's gonna finish cooking and we'll assemble it all. All right, look at that bubbly deliciousness. Cut this up and top it with that steak. Cut that steak across the grain in thin slices so it's easy to eat. Oh yeah, that looks awesome. 
All right, we're just gonna top this with some Generation Farm chives, cut it up into slices, and we've got a delicious flatbread pizza off the grill. <laughs> okay, finally, the time has come. The Thanksgiving leftovers are gonna be plated. Let's go. So we got the tostadas, the cheese is deliciously melted. Oh, perfect. Wow, look Isn't at look those great? dudes, wow. Look at those dudes. <laughs> those gorgeous. Why don't you grab those black beans? Yes. And what are you gonna do with those? Put those They're right on top? on top. Oh, those jalapenos that are on here too. It's gonna be awesome. Are you gonna put, you need to put two on this plate. Oh, we are. Okay. okay. And then you've got your greens because. Our greens. You gotta have the greens. And the heat from the black beans are gonna kinda melt those. Right. Black beans. What are you doing? Oh yeah, this is the stack. Come on, let's hit it with some black beans. What are you doing? Who's gonna eat that? We are. <laughs> That's huge. Karth, it's gonna fall. It's gonna fall this over. This is an entree tostada stack. Why don't you put your guac on there? Okie dokie. I've never seen anything like this. This is that cranberry with the Hold it, hold it, hold chipotle. it. This thing is like building a Lego set here. We gotta make sure this thing doesn't. Set. Gotta make Look sure how it doesn't much fall. Is on there. Is that Wait, gonna be your if, if we're going for it, we might as well go for it. What else is gonna go on there? And Don't the, breathe. It's gonna fall. The last <laughs> little bit is gonna be some, actually from Houston, a little bit of Mexican crema. Oh my god. Oh, oh yeah. Okay, you get to take the first bite. Let me know yeah, how it right. is. <laughs> uh -huh. I'm almost speechless because I don't think of, I did not know you're gonna build the tower. Does that not Texas. look incredible? Yeah, it's really pretty. All that deliciousness One would have been together. plenty for me. <laughs> I think you gotta use a Let's fork dig on in. this one. Okay, here we go. One, two, three. Balance it out. Crunch. See? Oh, did you hear it's that? It's all held together. That's the crunch that you want to hear when you're biting into a fresh tostada that's got to get it <laughs> cut, man. With the turkey and all, hold on. Going in. Here we go. First. This is not gonna be pretty, y'all, and I apologize in advance. Here we go. Probably one of us should have waited until the other one took a bite. <laughs> that is fantastic. That calls for another bite, y'all. Okay, so I need to tell you that, <clears throat> excuse me, that the recipe is on our website. That is tastetexastv.com. You can download every recipe we've ever made on this show. Also on social media, Twitter, Instagram. Facebook. Facebook, that's right. We hang out there too. Absolutely. Garth, this is a fantastic leftover it's meal. It's missing one thing. What? A margarita. Oh, yeah, oh, you got food on your chin right there. Oh, save it up for later. <laughs> All right, Stay happy out. Thanksgiving, See everybody. Good week. luck with those leftovers. See you next time. <laughs>